Well, good evening and welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Scott, I'm the CEO of CSW. Thank you so much for, for joining us, whether you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook right now, uh, or whether you're jumping into the recording later on. Um, tonight's event was inspired by one young girl who counted her faith in Jesus as being worth everything and refused to renounce that faith in exchange for her freedom. Leah Sharibu has been held captive by ISWAP, a faction of Boko Haram for over three years now. And today is Leah's birthday and we want to remember Leah and not give up, but push in and continue praying for her release. But we also know that there are many more Leahs in Nigeria today and we gather in prayer this evening for all of them, all those who suffer for their belief. This hour long event is hugely exciting. It's the second of five events on five different continents. Uh, this, uh, this lunchtime, our time, I'm getting confused with time zones. Uh, we had our first one with Southeast Asia. Uh, now with the UK, Nigeria will follow shortly after this. Uh, and then later on night, UK time, we'll have the US and uh, finishing us off will be Latin America, which is 1.30 a.m. tomorrow. If you'd like to join any of those other events, please do, so it would be hugely appreciated. Over these 24 hours, we want to create a global wave of prayer that goes right around the world and catches up many in their passion for freedom and justice. Uh, we're going to split our prayer time into three parts. Part one will be focused on Leah and the Sharibu family specifically. Part two, we're going to look at the issue of abduction and forced marriage. And part three, we'll look at the international response to the deeply troubling security situation in Nigeria today, particularly looking at the response of Nigerian and UK governments. At the end of each section, we're going to unite in prayer wherever we are. Uh, although this is online, we still want it to be as interactive as possible. And we invite you to share your prayers, share scriptures, uh, encouragements in the comments section on Facebook or YouTube. And we'll try and pop those up on the screen here and they will be read and amen. So we're excited that today we're exclusively going to be releasing this song uh, called Heroes of Faith, written specially for Leah on her 18th birthday by the absolute legendary Nigerian gospel singer Panam Percy Paul. Uh, we're going to play that in just a moment, but first here's Panam sharing his heart behind the song. Uh, we're in the fourth year of her captivity and it was her 18th birthday um, I really didn't want this name to just go down in history without anyone talking about what she is going through right now and what generally the church and the Christians in Nigeria are going through and in my language of communication, which is uh, music and songwriting, I decided I needed to speak about Leah Sharibu in, in a different light. And um, so I thought, instead of just, you know, uh, talking about uh, her pains and the pains of uh, Christians, why don't I celebrate, you know, the faith of this girl and the faith of other you know, heroes of uh, of, uh, uh, of of Christ. So this is no longer a religious thing per se. This is now an infringement on the human right of a little girl, and I think that in its in its own or uh, in itself uh, calls for uh, whatever you know voice, whatever you know uh, volume you know, loudness that we would give to it, it demands and requires that. Everyone has a right to believe what they want to believe. And so no one should be incarcerated because of their choice of belief. So uh, let those that have uh, the wherewithal and can put together the campaign and the rallies and so on, for once in our life, let us be able to stand up for justice and let us be able to stand up for one of our own. This is our own girl. Too many people just pretend as if nothing is wrong. Too many people, you know, politicians and leaders and, 
and what the people people we would refer to as you know men of the great will everyone just appears to have been silent about Leah Sharibu and also the plight of the church in Nigeria uh, but we won't stop and we're going to talk about this until the Lord Jesus returns Who would have thought that the faith of Leah Sharibu would make a nation struggle for survival? Who would have thought that a line from the Bible would be strong enough to rifle and make this girl just to die then to the night? She is the hero. The hero of faith. Heroes of faith. Heroes of the scar from the past. Is their greatest title. Not silver or gold. Heroes of faith. Their greatest reward. Is a cross of the world. Not which is untold. and pretend no wrong was done Who would have thought that no amount of darkness can quench the smallest light A daughter of Zion keeps shining on You are the hero The hero of faith Heroes of
Wow. Um, I absolutely love that. Um, was hugely grateful to everybody who gave their time to be involved in that project and um, such a lot of talent on display there and um, you know such a lot of talent but that that choir at the end gets me every time. Uh, we'll make sure that that's available for you to, to watch and share after uh, after tonight. Now we're really privileged now to hear from Leah's mother uh, Rebecca Sharabu in a video message that she's recorded especially for you this evening. So Nana Rebecca Sheribu, Maniche Mamalia. Eh, Agaskia, Bangaskianta. Ya, Carfafani, so say. Do mean Yenda, Ta, Saya, Bama, Uri, Bakoa, Uri, Amatache, Itabazata, Muslim Taba. Gaskia, Munji, that you want to have been the taste, so say. Eh, up in the Zanganta. Zanga ya mata. Abenda tayi gaskia na jinji na mata. Kuma muna kam mata adua. Mwala ya da. Watara na zata da wikida. Peto. Ya zuga maida gomleti de. Ya zu ba abenda zamu ya mfada. Kawe. Dumi tunda akat wikiyari nga nang. Ana kan abudaya. Sui mana arkawali, sui mana arkawali, arkawali ba de ba ba biuba. Ama hari enzu ba muga yari nyamu ba. Gaskia ba mujida ni one number. Dumi sui fele namu. Eh, wa enda shukat oki arkawali one na bodi ane kemisu. Ina musu godia gaskia da adu'o i wanda ake yi domin ita da mu family na Leah Allah ubangiji ya saka musu ya karfafa su kuma eh to zan ce mata har yanzu ta kara hakuri kuma muna mata adu'a duniya duka suna mata adu'a ba abin da yafi karfin Allah wata rana za ta fito Nothing is impossible with God. One day she will be free. This is the, this is why we're here. We're going to pray now for Leah and for her family. Uh, first, uh, you know, Pastor Ayo Adadoyan, uh, CEO of Peace and Social Justice UK, will lead us in prayer, and that will be followed by Jenny Cornfield, a CSW trustee. Um, during this time, please let's all raise our voices together wherever we are and agree in prayer. And also during this time, I invite you just to, to use the uh, the Facebook, YouTube comment section to share your prayers and scriptures for, for Leah and her family. Uh, Pastor Ayo, over to you. Yes, very good evening, Dan, and thank you for joining. Please do pray with me as we pray for this hero of faith, the many different heroes of faith uh, and their families. You know, the Bible encourages us in the book of Hebrews chapter 13. The third verse says, to remember those who are in prison, who are in captivity, who are in lockdown, who have been abducted, who have been kidnapped as though you and I were bound with them. Remember those who are mistreated as though you were suffering with them. As we raise our voices together tonight, you know, having experienced the last year to 15 months of what effectively is a minuscule version of a lockdown compared with what Leah and the Leahs of Nigeria are going through, join your voice with me as we raise our voices to heaven. Lord God, that you will of a truth, Lord God, provide a shelter for Leah, Father God, that she can be under. That even in the midst of whatever difficulty, challenge, circumstance, oh Lord, that she finds herself, that the many various different people who have been abducted, many of them who we do not even know their names, find themselves in, Lord, that you will indeed be their shelter, that you would be their strength, oh Lord God. Father God, that you would give her, you would give them an assurance of your presence, that you would strengthen them 
from the inside, O Lord God, that of a truth, Lord God, that you will pour out your comfort, O Lord, over your daughter, Leah, that you will pour out your comfort, O Lord God, that even in the difficult situation that she and many others find themselves, Lord God, that you will make yourself present. You will give them your utterance, Lord. You will put your words on her lips, O Lord God. You will give them a spirit and a cloak of perseverance in the midst of the difficulty. Lord, we just ask, O Lord God, that you will be their protection, O oh Lord God, in the midst of whatever their physical surroundings and circumstances are. Lord, that you will be their covering. You will be their protector. You will be the fourth man in the fire, O oh Lord God, for Leah and for every other person who is suffering in similar circumstances. Lord, in the same way that you were the angel Father, in the lion's den with Daniel, oh Lord God. Father, come and be in this circumstance. Come and be in these various situations that Leah and the Leahs of Nigeria are facing and are going through. You know, brothers and sisters, the 42nd uh, chapter of the book of Isaiah, verse 2 says, when you pass through the waters, and this scripture is speaking to Lear, is speaking to Alice and Gada, is speaking to all the other hostages who we do not even know. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord your God, the Bible says, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. The, 40, uh, the, the third verse got, carries on that I am your Lord. I would give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Lord, I pray that you would speak your words into the hearts of Leah, into the hearts of everyone held captive, Lord God. Father, and let it bring about a peace that surpasses all understanding. We pray, Father, for Leah's family. We pray, Father, for the families of people all over Nigeria and everywhere else, oh Lord God, that are going through similar circumstances. Lord, that you will be their refuge and their comfort, that you will give them an assurance as well, that of a truth, the day would come, even as Rebecca said in that video, where Leah will come home, where the mm -hmm. captives would return. Father, our eyes are on you. We look to you because we know there is nothing impossible for you to do. Thank you, Father. Hear our prayers tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Io. Let's just continue in our prayers. Lord, this is a birthday prayer, a prayer that celebrates and cradles Leah. In these moments, in this hour, we pray that Leah may know that she is celebrated and that she is deeply loved. Her faith, her courage and strength inspire and challenges us. We know that her eyes are fixed on you, Jesus. How her light shines. May the prayers that we pray for her lift her and hold her. As songs are sung on birthdays, may the lilt of our melody, the harmony of our voices, be sung over her this night. May she feel held in deep tenderness. May she feel surrounded as we all stand and keep watch over her. May she be assured that she's not alone. Three years she's been held captive. This is too long too many birthdays. As we bring her before you, Lord, we remember another woman who experienced injustice. We think of Hagar and how you met her in her desperation, and she declared that you were the God who sees. We declare, Lord, that you are the God who sees. You see Leah. She is in your sight, and no one can hide her from you. Meet her, Lord, in the ways you met Hagar. Comfort her, defend her, shelter and protect her. 
May your presence be constant and close, and may your peace alone hold captive her mind and her heart. Lord Jesus, you said, blessed are those who are persecuted because they love and follow you. Bless Leah deeply today. She is a hero of faith. And on her birthday, Lord, her 18th birthday, we also pray for her family. Be their constant, unfailing comfort and strength. Soothe them in the way a mother soothes her child. Amen. Soothe them in their fear when hope feels distant. Carry them when they feel weary. Remind them constantly that you are the God who sees and you are the God who sets the prisoners free. Nothing is impossible for you. And we pray too for all the families waiting for the return of their own Leahs. Be their rock and their refuge, their shelter from this storm that they're living through. Leah represents thousands of women and girls who've experienced similar persecution in sub-Saharan Africa and beyond. So many are being held hostage and we cry out to you for them. You see each and every one of them. You know their names and you know their stories. Surround them and protect them. God who shelters, meet them in the hurt, pain and the terror they're feeling. Keep them safe in body and mind and let no one break them or destroy them. Above all, Lord, we pray for their release. Set them free, Lord. Please set them free. May every person held captive be freed. God, you can turn the hearts of kings and rulers. Convict President Buhari to honour his pledge to Sicilia's yeah. freedom. May he and the Nigerian government work tirelessly on behalf of Leah and all those held hostage. Equip them to stand up to the terrorist groups of Boko Haram. In every state of Nigeria, give the local governors the courage and wisdom to relentlessly pursue peace, justice and security. Help them to honour and enact the Nigerian constitution that declares every citizen has the right to be protected, irrespective of gender, culture or religious belief. Mm. And we ask that you convict and compel as well the hearts of other global leaders to stand in both solidarity and action to secure Leah's release. And we pray for each one of us here that you would show us how to raise our voices powerfully and pray faithfully until Leah comes home. May her name always be at the forefront of our minds. May justice roll like rivers in the country of Nigeria and may there be deep shalom. Bless all those who are working for Leah's release. May they see the answer to their prayers. We pray that the horrors of murder and kidnappings would end and that life flourishing and freedom would become the overarching story of Nigeria. May your love permeate the hearts of those who seek to harm and destroy. May your justice and mercy infiltrate the absolute core of the leadership and philosophy that fuels Boko Haram and all groups connected to them. May they, like Saul, meet the God who sees. You are our hope, Lord. You are Nigeria's hope. Yes. You are Leah's hope. May your kingdom come. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. Thank you both so much. Thank you, Pastor Iob. Thank you, Jenny. Leah and other young girls like her have been robbed not only uh, of their freedom today, but also their hopes and dreams for tomorrow. We asked four young women who are the same age as Leah about their experiences as teenagers and to reflect on the freedoms that they enjoy. Uh, 
I will turn 18 by God's grace in June, June 21st. My name is Caitlin and I turn 18 on the 5th of August. I'm Venice and I turn 18 on the 18th of February. How do you celebrate your 18th birthday? So, my 18th birthday is held at home. My family threw me a surprise birthday party. Well, hopefully with my friends. I would quite like to probably go out with my friends. I, well, I'll be in school, so I plan to just take myself out to celebrate my birthday and, you know, have fun, get a good meal and enjoy myself that day. That's how I plan to celebrate my 18th birthday. Uh, my friends managed to surprise me nonetheless. Uh, they decided to book a place in Sun, near Sunway and then they decided to do a surprise dinner for me and I was actually very grateful and I was surprised. Yeah, so I thank God for these friends. Well, I plan to, when I finish my study here in Bowen University, I want to become, I want to do my master's, my PhD, and I want to become a professor of microbiology. My hopes and dreams, uh, to be very honest, it may sound simple, but actually, uh, yeah, think about it. Uh, I really want to be happy, genuinely happy. It just seems so cool to me to like travel and just make loads of friends and like, I don't even need to travel with someone, but maybe just like leave and go somewhere and meet new people. My hopes and dreams for the future is to be a successful entrepreneur and to explore more and learn more about the business world. And I also um, hope I have the ability and the capability to help others. And then with my happiness, I want to spread this happiness to people and also, you know, be the light and the joy to other people, bring joy to other people. Um, well, what does it like to be 18? Uh, uh, so far, it's not been... It's exciting, I mean, it's exciting. Finally, I'm 18, like, whoa! <laughs> Finally, an adult. Um. I still feel like I'm a kid sometimes, you know, sometimes I maybe act immature and all, but yeah, it really doesn't feel that different, but I'm still grateful that uh, they, uh, my friends managed to pull off a birthday surprise for me either way. But yes, it feels great to be 18. I feel like I'm still 17, so life is pretty much the same. Yeah. I just, I, she's something on, I would want to be like in that she just seems, I don't know, she just seems to her, it's so powerful when you hear about how she makes her decision, like, to not renounce, like, her faith in that. I, I, like, the question comes to mind of, oh, would I be able to do that? And I don't know, that's what's powerful to me. As a, as a father with a, a daughter that's about the same age, I just find that the, the contrast that that shows um, to most those wonderful four young women and uh, what Leah's going through today is just incredibly stark. and. Uh, and helps push, pushes me towards prayer. Um, now, the issue of abductions of young girls in Nigeria is greater, perhaps, than we might realise, and it's not only committed by terrorists. I'm going to hand over to our head of advocacy, Dr. Kataza Gonwe, to share about this situation and to help us pray. Thank you, Scott. In Nigeria's Sharia states, and particularly in rural areas, underage non-Muslim schoolgirls are regularly abducted by local men and forced to convert and marry without parental consent. A practice that predates the infamous abductions by terrorist factions. Parents are generally informed their children converted and married willingly and often that they are in the custody of Muslim traditional leaders or institutions despite stringent laws penalizing child abduction, defilement, and underage marriage, appeals to law enforcement agencies prove fruitless as they are either complicit in the abduction or fearful of provoking large-scale social unrest. Last year, as the nation was under a COVID-19 lockdown, while farming communities in central states were under constant attack from a militia of Fulani ethnicity, at least 15 Hausa Christian girls were abducted in Kaduna, Kano, and Katsina states. Oedan Kaka was amongst five children, girls, abducted in Kaduna state at that time. 
She was taken from her home to the chief imam of Ikara and was forcibly converted and handed over to a Muslim family. Joyce's family engaged lawyers. However, the closure of courts during the lockdown delayed efforts to secure her release. In Kano State, a, a Christian girl named Becky was among two minors depicted in a video reciting the Muslim Declaration of Faith at the instigation of the governor of Kano State, Umar Abdullahi Ganduje. As criticism grew about the apparent role of the highest state official in the conversion of a Christian minor, the governor denied the girls were Christians, insisting they were followers of traditional African beliefs who were converted under the auspices of his own foundation. Regardless of their original faith, the conversion of these minors in the seeming absence of parents or legal guardians violated the law. Abductions and false conversions are particularly rife in Katsina state. 15 year old Aisha Mani lived with her parents in the Kafur local government area of Katsina state. It is a religiously mixed area where those who violate the rights of the Christian community enjoy the sanction and protection of the district head of Kafur and the Emir of Katsina. Due to the prevalence of abductions in the area, Aisha's parents had speedily relocated her to her older sister's home in Funtua town after noticing that an older man named Mohammed Samela was behaving suspiciously towards her. However, on the 10th of February, 2021, Aisha disappeared. After searching and failing to locate her, her brother and sister-in-law went to the police station to report her missing. Two days later, Aisha's parents received a call from the district head of Kafur, who told them to stop searching because Aisha was safe in his custody. They immediately rushed to his palace to bring her, their daughter home but he refused to let them see her, claiming Aisha had converted to Islam and forced them to leave without her. 10 days later, the district head called again and informed them that Muhammad Samela wanted to marry their daughter. They returned to the palace where they rejected the offer and insisted that Aisha be returned to them to continue her studies. Aisha's parents subsequently engaged the services of a legal firm, which wrote to the Katsina State Commissioner of Police Command, demanding the immediate arrest, investigation, and prosecution of the district head and of Mohammed Samaila and Aisha's immediate return. These arrests are yet to occur. Instead, the area commander instructed the district head not to proceed with the marriage. However, the district head ignored this order and facilitated a marriage without parental consent. Aisha's abduction was the ninth in which the district head has been implicated. Like Aisha, four other abductees remain in captivity. One was returned two years after her abduction, having suffered a mental breakdown. Another was returned pregnant and the body of a married woman whose marriage had been forcibly annulled when she was abducted was returned when she died. A few are rescued, like Sadia Amos, who was abducted on the 26th of January, 2020 in Kaduna and freed in March, 2020. Thankfully, on the 27th of June, 2020, Joy also regained her freedom. While we rejoice at every rescue, these represent a small and hard fought fraction who are rescued after suffering immense trauma and are often obliged to relocate for fear of being kidnapped once more, or facing violence. The rights of untold numbers of young girls and even women have been and continue to be violated comprehensively in Nigeria's Sharia states. The use of such euphemisms as marriage 
should not obscure the reality that minors whose rights to freedom of religion or belief, education, parental care, and liberty and security of person are being violated comprehensively, continue to be subjected to gender specific violations with little or no recourse to justice, simply on account of their faith. Having heard all of this, let us now lift the situation up in prayer, led by Pastor Fred Williams of Spirit Life Mission and CSW's um, Emily, who is the campaigns and research officer. Lord, we pray as we see underage non-Muslim girls being regularly abducted and forced to convert and marry without parental consent by terrorist factions. Lord, we pray as we see parents being informed that their children have converted and married willingly in the custody of Muslim traditional rulers and institutions. Lord, we pray as we see this increase of child abduction and defilement and underage marriage being normalized. We pray, O oh God, as we see the continuous appeals to law enforcement agencies proving to be fruitless. Lord, we cry out on behalf of the helpless victims, the voiceless victims. Lord, we pray with growing concerns as we see increased accusations of security agents being complicit in the abduction. Lord, we pray as we see the almost inevitable large-scale social unrest about to be unleashed on the nation. Lord, we cry out for your help. We cry out for help because as a nation, even under COVID-19, even under the lockdown, Lord, we see Christian farming communities in the central regions of Nigeria continue to suffer brutal attacks from Fulani headsmen. Lord, we pray for the 15 Hausa girls, Christian girls that were abducted in Kaduna, in Kano, in Katsina. Lord, we pray that you will intervene. Lord, we cry out as we see these forced conversions in the absence of parents or legal guardians violating the law of the land. Lord, we cry out for help. We pray as we see things happening in Kano, in Katsina, in Plateau State, in Benue State. We see, Lord, the injustice as 15-year-old girls like, like Aisha Mani, who lived with her parents in, in Kafu local government, Rafin Yaka to be specific, Lord, in Katsina State. Lord, we pray as we see victims upon victims taken under the guise of marriage. Lord, we pray that you would expose them Lord, we pray that you will intervene. Lord, we pray for help. As we see communities being sacked, oh God, clans, families destroyed, plundered, traumatized. Lord, as we see the right of untold numbers of young girls and even women being violated across the land. Father, we pray that you will intervene. We cry out for help as we see in Nigeria, Sharia states and beyond such grave injustices. The right of freedom, the right to believe, the right of freedom, of education, of parental care, of liberty, of security being violated, being destroyed completely. Lord, we pray that the abuse, the injustice, the increasing and unbearable terror Father, we just pray for help. We lack the words to pray adequately, but we say, Lord, heal our land. Intervene, Lord, and help us. Amen. And Lord, as we hear these stories and we look at the situation, our heart breaks and we recognize, God, that you know pain too and so we thank you that we come to you as a god who weeps with us who feels our pain who identifies with us whose heart breaks at the injustice in this world god i bring before you the abductors of these girls i ask lord that you would convict them 
that you would transform their hearts to be ones of righteousness, to be pursuers of justice. Lord, we lift up those in captivity right now. We lift up the House of Christian Girls in Kaduna, Kano and Katsina states. We lift up Becky, we lift up Aisha. You know their names, God, and we ask, please keep them safe. Be with them now in this moment. In Psalm 91, you say that if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you, no plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. And God, we ask that your angels will protect these girls, your daughters, wherever they go, that no weapon formed against them will prosper. And we thank you, Jesus, for the release of joy and sedia. We thank you for their freedom. And right now, Lord, as I'm sure that they are processing intense trauma, I ask that you would be close to them, that you would guard their minds from fear, that you would break off shame in Jesus' name. Any shame that might surround their experience, that might hold on to their family and their community as they are welcomed back in, we pray that you would bring freedom and unconditional love into those families and into those communities. And we thank you for your word in Isaiah 54. And I pray this now over all these girls. Fear not. You will no longer live in shame. Don't be afraid. There is no more disgrace for you. You will no longer remember the shame of your youth and the sorrows of widowhood. For your creator will be your husband. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. He is your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of all the earth. With everlasting love, you will have compassion, God. And you say, for the mountains may move and the hills disappear, but even then my faithful love for you will remain. My covenant of blessing will never be broken, says the Lord who has mercy on you. God, your covenant of blessing will never be broken to these girls or women or anyone in captivity. And I pray this over Nigeria, a storm-battered city, troubled and desolate. I will rebuild you with precious jewels and make your foundation from lapis lazuli. I will make your towers of sparkling rubies, your gates of shining gems and your walls of precious stones. I will teach all your children and they will enjoy great peace. You will be secure under a government that is just and fair. Your enemies will stay far away. You will live in peace and terror will not come near you. We claim that, Lord, that Nigeria will be under a government that is just and fair. Lord, we pray that you would enable righteousness and justice to reign over Nigeria and that you would transform the government to be one that speaks up for those things. But we pray that they would become a government of justice and fairness. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And yes, and amen and amen. And thank you, Emily, and thank you, Pastor Fred. Um, a CSW challenge uh, and encourage those in positions of power whose policies or actions can bring about change. Uh, to do so, we work with the UK government as well as uh, the United Nations and with the US government, uh, the European Union and other international fora. We're going to hear now from Lord David Alton, uh, Vice Chair of the All Party Parliamentary Group for Freedom of Religion or Belief. Uh, it's a bit of a mouthful, uh, on the situation in Nigeria and the responses of the Nigerian and UK governments. And this is going to be followed by prayer led by Brian Heasley, uh, International Prayer Director for 24-7 Prayer. As we think about Leah, her family are drawing comfort from the words of Psalm 20. Drawing inspiration from its words, they trust that God will comfort and answer Leah in her distress, that he'll send help from his sanctuary that he will honour her faith 
and will return her to her family, who are so desperate to have her with them again. As they call for Leah's deliverance from captivity, we must never forget all the others held captive by terrorist factions, including assailants with Fulani ethnicity. They include Alice Ngada, Grace Taku, and the 112 remaining Chibok girls who have now been enslaved for seven years. We also remember hundreds of girls and young women in Nigeria's Sharia states who have been abducted, forcibly converted, and forced to marry men who are often older than their own parents. May they be given the fortitude to withstand the cruelty that they're currently enduring, and may efforts be redoubled to secure their release. Millions of us have not forgotten them. We will not choose to look the other way, and we will remain vocal on their behalf. But may there also be justice. The Nigerian constitution states that, and I quote, the primary purpose of government is the security and welfare of the people, and it recognises equal rights for all citizens, the sanctity of human life and human dignity. Additionally, Nigeria's Child Rights Act stipulates a fine of around £1,800, a five-year prison sentence or both for anyone involved in child betrothal and child marriage, and a 10-year prison sentence for anyone abducting a child from lawful custody and a maximum life term for carnal knowledge of a child. The Nigerian government has a statutory duty, but also an obligation born out of common humanity to its own people, particularly to the most vulnerable, and it must honour its duties to its nation before it's too late. In its 2020 report on Nigeria, the all-party parliamentary group on international freedom of religion or belief at Westminster, of which I'm vice chair, found that this ideology inspires multiple groups, including Boko Haram and ISWAP, and has also been adopted by some Fulani herders, and is the underlying reason why these abductions and these atrocities have occurred. Consequently, Nigeria's religious diversity, which ought to be a source of strength, has arguably become its greatest weakness. The continued targeting of Christians and symbols of Christian identity, such as churches, is simply unacceptable, particularly in a Commonwealth country. This violent extremism is a threat, not just to the Christians whom it targets directly, but also to all civilians who are adversely affected by the violence. The UK, remember, is one of Nigeria's major funders through sources of overseas aid and development money. As it considers new trading arrangements in the post-Brexit era, the United Kingdom government must encourage the Nigerian government to prioritise the release of all who are held captive by extremists, and to address every source of insecurity in a comprehensive and unbiased manner with perpetrators being held to account and being brought to justice. And we must use our aid programmes, our trading opportunities, our friendships and the wonderful Nigerian diaspora in the United Kingdom to achieve all of those targets. The UK must also ensure that humanitarian assistance for the displaced not only reaches intended recipients in the northeast, but is also extended to communities displaced in religion related violence in central Nigeria and elsewhere. The unremitting news of gruesome violence committed with seeming impunity will continue to damage the Nigerian national psyche, but also its reputation worldwide, even casting doubt on the ability of that great country to survive. If the Nigerian state founders, it will be to the detriment of the people, to the region and the continent. To prevent this, the Nigerian government must definitively tackle aggressive jihadist extremism. The Nigerian government must fulfil its promise made in 2015 that it would defeat Boko Haram, and President Buhari must fulfil his promise to Leah's mother, Rebecca Sharibu, whom I've met, that he would rescue Leah. Leah's story 
symbolizes the existential challenge which Nigeria faces. On this, her 18th birthday, and for, and for however long it may take, millions around the world will be holding Leah in our hearts and we will not forget her. Thank you so much for that, Lord Alton. We really appreciate your words and we pray that they're heard. My name is Brian Heasley. I'm the International Prayer Director of 24-7 Prayer. I'm going to lead us in a short time of prayer. Father, we pray for Leah Sharibu and her family. We pray that you would be with her. We pray for her freedom. We pray that you would be present with her right now. We pray for strength and we pray for power to come to her. Father, we do ask that you would come and speak to the government in Nigeria. Lord, that they would act definitively in rooting out the terrorist factions that they see in their land, that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them strength, and that you would give them the foresight to know how to act and when to act. And Lord, we pray for the church in Nigeria. We pray that you would come and you would strengthen your body, that as our brothers and sisters face challenges and trials from so many different sides, we pray that they would be strengthened by you, the one who brings strength. We pray that you would be their strong tower, that you would be their rock, that you would be the one who holds them, the one who protects them and the one who leads them. Come Holy Spirit, empower your church, embolden your church. We pray for the reign of your kingdom to grow in Nigeria. We pray for those on the edges, those in the far flung regions who are suffering right now, that you would come and you would meet with them. So Lord, we pray that you would act spiritually and supernaturally in the land of Nigeria. We pray that you would act politically and socially in the land of Nigeria. And we boil it down to you acting in the life of one person and bringing freedom for her in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Alton. Thank you so much, Brian. Um, CSW is pleased to partner closely with many MPs in Westminster who care deeply for those suffering violations of freedom of religion or belief, and particularly for, for Leah. Um, three of those, MP, uh, those MPs have shared messages and reflections, uh, on, uh, uh, which we'd like to share with you now. And those are going to be followed by prayer from CSW's founder president, Mervyn Thomas. As a member of parliament in the UK, I'm the Prime Minister's Special Envoy for Freedom of Religion or Belief. On Leah's 18th birthday, I reflect on the strength which she has shown over the last three years, during which time she has been held in terrible condition in captivity. I am deeply concerned for her welfare and for the welfare of all those held by Boko Haram and the Islamic State West Africa. These groups have caused immense suffering to communities in Nigeria. They seek to undermine the right to freedom of religion or belief by indiscriminately attacking all those who do not subscribe to their extremist views. Today is, of course, a sad reminder that Leah still remains with her captors and not as she should be with her friends and family. And uh, as I've said in previous broadcasts before, myself and Mervyn from CSW both share a birthday with Leah and it will be very different for us. The, the kind of birthday that Leah is experiencing, but we will not give up hope. And perhaps that the best gift that we could all hope for is to see Leah's safe return to her family. Today, I am also thinking of Leah's mother, Rebecca, who I had the privilege of meeting more than once. And the mothers and fathers of all the girls and boys kidnapped or killed by terrorist groups in Nigeria. On the occasions when I met Rebecca and speaking as a mother, I will never forget the sadness in her eyes as she spoke of her deep loss. No parent should ever have to fathom the unimaginable distress that mothers like Rebecca have lived with. It was a really distressing thing to see the pain on Rebecca's face. Um, when we met her, you introduced her to me 
Mervyn, it was in the House of Lords. And you know, you and I both know that there are thousands of campaign meetings in the Houses of Parliament, uh, month in, month out, people pressing the government to do X, Y, and Z. Um, there was something different this time though. Um, you could just see that for her, the campaigning was actually irrelevant. She just wanted her daughter home. It was, it was, it was as simple as that. So we as MPs in the House of Commons will continue to campaign for that safe release and very much hope that I'll not be recording uh, another video this time next year, but instead Leah will be back with her family and celebrating with them and rejoicing in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. So my thoughts and prayers are today with Leah and with Rebecca and all those still held in captivity and their families. The UK government remains committed to working with the Nigerian government to help tackle the terrorist threat in northeast Nigeria. We will continue to engage with the Nigerian government in support of urgent action to secure the return of Leah Sharibu and all those still held. And finally, in closing, may I thank Christian Solidarity Worldwide for enabling me to pass this message to, to Rebecca and her family. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, as we've listened tonight to the terrible tragedies of lives, Lord, we, we've gone beyond numbers and let, let, us, let us see beyond numbers and statistics and let us see individuals. Let us see people made in your image people lord that love you and want to serve you lord as we've heard the tragic stories lord our our hearts have broken lord we have wept but lord i recognize that weeping is not enough unless it leads to action and we read in um, in 1 John where it tells us, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Lord, your word in Proverbs 31 tells us to speak up for those unable to speak for themselves. So, Lord, we thank you for Fiona and Jeremy and David and many others in Parliament and also in Congress in America and others around the world that are speaking up on these issues. But Lord, we ask tonight that you would magnify their voices. Oh Lord, we pray uh, that there would be a megaphone uh, placed at their lips, Lord, that uh, their voices would not just be heard, Lord, but people would be compelled to take action. People in authority around the world Lord, you've told us to pray for those in authority, uh, Lord, that we might live peaceable lives. We want to live peaceable lives with justice. And Lord, so we pray tonight, uh, Lord, that people, that governments would wake up. Lord, we thank you that they, they know there is more awareness of these issues in political circles today than there has ever been. In, 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 in my lifetime. Thank you for that awareness, Lord. But we pray, Lord, that it would be more uh, the, 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 than words, Lord, that it would lead to action that will make a difference. Lord, we pray that all those members of the, um, of the all party parliamentary group would, would, would not let up until we see justice until we see things change. Lord, we pray uh, that our government, we pray that the American government, we pray that the international community would rise up and would hold President Buhari and the Nigerian government to account. Lord, we pray that the security situation in that country, Lord, would change. We pray that we would stop to see, would stop seeing these abductions. Lord, we know if this continues, Lord, we know that the bloodshed will turn to incredible carnage. Lord, it's already bad. But we pray that good men and good women around the world will rise up. 
And Lord, we pray that you would give us that, uh, Lord, give us that inspiration and motivation. Lord, we get so introverted in our lives. Lord, we get so inward looking. We get so caught up with our everyday things, Lord, that we lose sight of the Leahs. We lose sight of the Alices. We lose sight of uh, those many others around the world who this moment have had their freedom taken away. Oh, Lord, and as Pastor Io prayed earlier, Lord, you've told us to remember those in prison as if we were in prison with them. And so, Lord, we pray that you would help every one of us here tonight, Lord, not just to be moved by this, but to be moved to action. Help us all to be prepared to stand up and speak out, Lord, that our politicians around the world would not remain silent. Lord, that they would stand up to governments uh, and, and we think beyond Nigeria, stand up to governments like China and India, Lord, who have great trade deals with nations who are frightened to speak up. Lord, we pray that you would give our politicians boldness to speak truth and that we might see justice reigning around the world because we ask it in and through the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Merv. Um, as David Linden dropped into to his video, it's uh, Merv does share a uh, birthday with Leah, which means it's his birthday today. Um, sorry for mentioning that, Merv. Um, I just think it's, uh, uh, for all those of you who know Merv, uh, I think it's just a great testament to his character and also the spirit of CSW that Merv is spending his birthday uh, speaking at five different prayer events on five different continents, five different time zones and praying for Leah. Um, so I think if uh, I'm sure Merv would like nothing better as a birthday present than a commitment from all of us lot to, to continue to pray for Leah. Thank you. Please. Thanks, Merv. Uh, now let me introduce you to our head of fundraising at CSW, uh, Audrey, who's going to share with you a few practical ways that we can respond tonight. Over to you, Audrey. You're still muted. Sorry about that. Um, thank you so much for joining us in prayer this evening. Um, we hope you've been really inspired by the courage of Leah and so many others who've been targeted for their beliefs. We thank God that we can all play a part through prayer, through campaigning and giving in raising awareness of cases like Leah's and challenging those in power whose policies or actions can bring about change. So today we wanted to give you two opportunities to respond. The first one is that you can pledge to pray for Leah and other heroes of faith. You can do that now at heroesoffaith.co.uk and we'll send you regular updates with how you can pray for those suffering for what they believe. Secondly, you could make a gift to CSW, CSW's work we really couldn't advocate for people suffering for their beliefs around the world without the faithful support of people like yourself. If you would like to give, you can donate by text or online. To give by text, simply text CSW10 to 70570 to give £10. That's CSW10 to 70570 to give £10 and will receive 100% of your donation. You can also make a gift online at csw.org.uk forward slash donate. We're going to give you a moment to make a gift now if you wish to do so, and then Scott will lead us in a time of prayer. Thank you again for all your support. We deeply appreciate every gift you make, and we'll be using your donation to keep challenging injustice until everyone is free to believe. i
Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Audrey. Um, to close in prayer this evening, we're going to do something uh, a little bit different. A number of you have helped us create this film uh, that shows candles burning for Leah all over the world. Uh, the music you'll hear is by a Nigerian group called Higher Call, and the chorus says in Hausa, uh, it says, uh, you are light, Leah Sheribu, a hero of during the video, we'll display on screen some of the scriptures and prayers that you've shared this evening. Uh, this is a way for each of you to lead us all in a prayer for Leah and for all those suffering for their faith in Nigeria. Please do pray along with us now. You are the soul. And our faith, and you gave us courage to stand for the truth and for the light. Sharibu, that's what you've done, and that's what you're representing. A city upon a hill can never be hidden. You are the hero, you are the star. <laughs> Yes, you are like a city upon the hill oh, Like a star in the sky, you shine so bright Yeah, Itila Aduhu the grace to stand for the faith to come celebrate a hero to the church mm, we celebrate a giant in the faith yeah Sharibu Jaru Marbanguskia Um, so all that's left for me to do is to say thank you all so much for your prayers and your support. Um, please remember this is this event is only the second of five going on during these 24 hours. Uh, next, we're going to be joining the amazing event hosted by CSW Nigeria. Really looking forward to that. It's going to include two live song performances and contributions from Nigerian political and religious leaders. It's beginning at eight o'clock UK time. So that's uh, 20 minutes, just enough time to get yourself another cup of tea, put some toast on, whatever you're going to do. And um, you can find the links for all of those events and to pledge to pray, campaign and give for Leah and other heroes of faith at heroesoffaith.co.uk. And I'm sure it'll be all over Facebook as well. Please do share that video of the song. And um, yeah, thank you all and may God bless you. The one to sing. Free Leah today. Free Leah today. Free Leah today.